Hello wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic. In previous videos in this microbiology playlist, we have talked about the gram-positive rods, the gram-positive cocci, the gram-negative rods, and the gram-negative cocci. Today we shall talk about congenital torch infections. The T stands for toxoplasmosis, O stands for others. R is rubella, C is cytomegalovirus, H is herpes simplex, also HIV, and the S stands for syphilis. This is video number 14 in the series. To watch the entire playlist, click on the link in the description box. And also use the link in the description to get a discount towards more than 1000 pictured mnemonics. Click the like button, click the subscribe button and let's get started. In video number one in this microbiology playlist, also in the Picmonic playlist, we talked about Actinomyces israeli, Listeria, Corynebacterium diphtheria, and Nocardia. In video number two, we talked about the Clostridia, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium difficile, and Clostridium perfringens. In video number three, we talked about Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Strip pneumo. In video number four, we continued the Streptococci, Streptococcus viridans, Pyogenes, and Agalactiae. Keep Streptococcus agalactia in mind because we will talk about it today. It's also known as Group B Streptococci, by the way. Also, Enterococci and Strep bovis were topics in video number four. Video number five, the Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus cereus, as well as Mycobacterium leprae and Mycobacterium tuberculosis. In video number six, we talked about Neisseria meningitidis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Moraxilla cateralis. Video number seven, it was Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella pertussis, Pastorella brucella, and Francisella. Video number eight, Legionella and H. pylori. And here is an example of a bacterium that can lead to cancer. How about viruses? Do you know the viruses that can cause cancer? Comment below. In video number nine, it was Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio cholera, Escherichia coli, and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Video number 10, Pseudomonas proteus and Salmonella. Video number 11 was Shigella and Yersinia. Video number 12 was about the spirochetes, Trypanema pallidum, that causes syphilis. Keep that in mind because we'll talk about it today, especially congenital syphilis. Leptospira causes leptospirosis and Borrelia burgdorferi causes Lyme disease. And in the last video, which was number 13, we talked about Chlamydia, Rickettsia, and Mycoplasma. What is microbiology? Micro means small, bio means life, ology means the study of. So microbiology is the study of small microscopic life. Microbes are divided into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. And that's why the science of microbiology is divided into bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, as well as parasitology. Today, we will mention group B streptococci. These are gram-positive cocci. They are called Streptococcus agalactiae, also known as Group B strep. We'll also talk about congenital syphilis. Syphilis is a trypanema. It's a spirochete. Anatomically, it was supposed to be gram-negative, but in reality, in the lab, it does not stain with gram. That's why we need other methods, such as the dark field microscopy. And we have talked about Group B strep, as well as syphilis, in previous videos in this playlist. If you want a nice animated chart to help you classify these organisms, the gram positives, the gram negatives, etc., Picmonic has a very nice chart. Today we're talking about torch infections. There are many types of infections associated with pregnancy. There are infections that are more common during pregnancy and postpartum, so they can happen anytime, but they are higher risk at pregnancy. There are other infections whose complications increase during pregnancy, such as group B strep. Then we have infections unique to pregnancy, such as chorioamnionitis, septic pelvic thrombophlebitis, and episiotomy with its lacerations. And then we have a group of infections affecting the fetus. This is what we call torch infections, which is an acronym that stands for the T is toxoplasma, the O is other infections, including varicella zoster virus, parvo B19, hepatitis B, group B strep, and we can also add gonorrhea. The R is rubella, the C is CMV, cytomegalovirus, the H is herpes simplex virus and HIV virus, 
and the S is congenital syphilis. Now enjoy the pickmonics. There are several serious maternal infections that are associated with congenital anomalies and disorders, and you can screen for them by remembering the acronym TORCHES. It's a witch trial, and the angry mob wants to burn the woman with a torch as she's strapped to a screen door. T stands for toxoplasmosis, shown by the Tux Plasma Gandhi. Toxoplasmosis is a protozoan infection and is often associated with pregnant women changing cat litter boxes. O is for other, shown by the other witches that have been captured, and this category includes infections such as gonorrhea, varicella, hepatitis B virus, or HBV, human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, and parvovirus. Testing for these conditions is imperative in the prenatal period. R represents rubella, the red bell ringing, signifying the start of this rebellion. Rubella is a disease caused by the rubella virus and characteristically presents with a rash, low-grade fever, cold-like symptoms, and swollen glands. The sound awakens the side toe megavirus, which represents C for cytomegalovirus. CMV infection or cytomegalic inclusion disease during pregnancy can lead to miscarriage or stillbirth. Newborns with CMID present with intrauterine growth restriction or IUGR and may be lethargic, have hypotonia, microcephaly, and experience seizures. H is for herpes simplex virus, the herpes harp virus. HSV in neonates can present with a vesicular rash, seizures, or sepsis. S is for syphilis, seen here as syphilis sisyphus, which can present with deformities of the nose and legs, including a saddle nose and saber legs. The herpes heart virus summons the diagnostic computer to perform testing on the witch, as pregnant mothers need diagnostic testing to determine titers and risk for torch infections. So, in summary, torches screening is an important aspect of caring for pregnant women. T is for toxoplasmosis, O for other, R for rubella, C for cytomegalovirus, H for herpes simplex virus, and S is for syphilis. Appropriate diagnostic testing should be performed to determine the risk for torches infections. The torch infections include toxoplasmosis, they include other infections such as varicella zoster virus, parvo B19, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and others. Then we have rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus, and don't forget syphilis. Toxoplasma gondii, shown by Gandhi in a tux with the plasma TV, is a parasitic protozoa that can cause congenital torch infection, the torch in the picture in a fetus whose mother contracts the disease during pregnancy. Mothers who contract the disease are often asymptomatic, shown by her smiling face, and rarely have lymph adenopathy, shown by the lymph lime with the ad sign. Nonspecific signs common to many torch infections include hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia, depicted by the yellow torch made of a liver and a trombone peanut. Common symptoms in infants with congenital infection include intrauterine growth retardation, shown by the babies in the seat clamp stroller reading the Reed Tard book. They can also get hepatosplenomegaly, the enlarged liver and spleen balloons, deafness, the baby's headphones, chorioretinitis, the red Oreo tin eyes, and hydrocephalus, the hydras coming from the head. Congenital toxoplasmosis is also commonly associated with calcifications, illustrated by the calcified cow. Next, we have toxoplasmosis. It's one of the torch infections. We have asymptomatic mother, sometimes with lymphadenopathy. Don't forget the deafness, the chorioretinitis, the hydrocephalus, and the intrauterine growth restriction, as well as the intracranial calcifications. Rubella is one of the congenital torch infections, shown as a red bell torch. This is an RNA virus which causes nonspecific symptoms common to many torch infections, including hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia, represented by the yellow torch made of liver and a trombone peanut. Rubella leads to numerous defects in utero and is most dangerous to the fetus at 12 to 16 weeks of gestation. 
Eventually, neonates are born with a classic triad of manifestations, including a heart defect in the form of patent ductus arteriosus, shown by the open duct connecting the aorta and pulmonary artery, or pulmonary artery hypoplasia, the pulmonary artery with hippoplates, ocular defects such as cataracts, the Cadillac cataracts, and deafness, the headphones. Another classic symptom of rubella in infants is a blueberry muffin rash, the blueberry muffin body, while glaucoma can also develop, the glauc eye. So in summary, rubella is an RNA virus that causes a type of congenital torch infection. Commonly, we see nonspecific symptoms of many torch infections, including hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia. The classic triad of neonatal manifestations include a heart defect in the form of patent ductus arteriosus or pulmonary artery hypoplasia, along with cataracts and deafness. Infants can also display a blueberry muffin rash and glaucoma. Rubella is German measles. It's one of the torch infections. We have cataracts, we have glaucoma, we have blueberry muffin rash. Don't forget the deafness the patent ductus arteriosus, and the hypoplastic pulmonary artery. Cytomegalovirus is a DNA virus and is one of the congenital torch infections. Cytomegalovirus's torch characteristics are portrayed in this pygmonic by the side-toe megavirus with the torch. Newborns who develop cytomegalovirus typically display nonspecific torch symptoms that are common to many of the torch infections, including hepatosplenomegaly and thrombocytopenia, which is why we show the yellow torch made up of a liver and a trombone peanut. Neonatal manifestations include intrauterine growth restriction or retardation, illustrated as the restrictive belt on the uterus. Another common symptom more specific to the cytomegalovirus infection is deafness, shown by the headphones covering the ears, along with microcephaly, the small head. Additional manifestations of neonatal CMV include seizures, portrayed by Caesar, and paraventricular calcifications, the pervent calcified cow. Moreover, CMV causes a petechial rash, shown by the tiki mask with a rash, which is often described as a blueberry muffin rash, illustrated literally as the blueberry muffin with a rash. Finally, another symptom of cytomegalovirus is chorioretinitis, the oreo red tin eyes, which is a full thickness retinal infection that can lead to blindness if not treated. Infants with congenital CMV infection are usually diagnosed with urine viral culture, shown as the urinal virus culture dish, or through PCR or polymerase chain reaction studies of the blood or serum, the polymer with the chain reacting. So let's briefly review the torch infection, cytomegalovirus. Signs and symptoms include nonspecific torch symptoms like hepatosplenomegaly and thrombocytopenia. Infants display intrauterine growth restriction along with deafness and microcephaly. Congenital CMV also leads to seizures and paraventricular calcifications. Classically, we see a petechial rash with this infection, which is described as a blueberry muffin rash along with chorioretinitis. Diagnosis is made through urine viral culture or PCR studies of the blood or serum. Cytomegalovirus is another torch infection. We have deafness, we have microcephaly, there is hypotonia, we have seizures, we have blueberry muffin rash, petechiae, periventricular calcifications in the brain, chorioretinitis, and the diagnosis is via urine viral culture or PCR. Syphilis is one of the congenital torch infections that can occur when transmitted vertically from mother to child. In this pygmonic, we describe the spirochete bacterial infection, syphilis, as syphilis sisyphus, a character from Greek mythology. Notice that we use the spirals on the boulder to represent spirochete. Also, make note that torch infections are portrayed in pycmonics as a special torch, which illustrates several nonspecific torch symptoms, including hepatosplenomegaly, shown by the liver-shaped flame on the torch, jaundice, shown by the yellow color of the torch, and thrombocytopenia, the trombone peanut torch handle. Now, congenital syphilis can result in stillbirth, shown by the baby stone statue or cause hydrops fatalis of the infant, portrayed by the eyedrop fetus, which is a condition of abnormal fluid accumulation in at least two compartments of the fetus. If the child survives any perinatal complications, deformities of the bone are common, beginning with a sharp anterior bowing of the tibia, a development called saber shins, illustrated as the saber-toothed tiger biting the shin. Those born with congenital syphilis often display notched teeth, seen literally as the notched teeth and these are often referred to as Hutchinson's teeth. These teeth are smaller, more widely spaced than normal teeth, and display notches on the biting surfaces. 
Another dental complication of syphilis is the presence of dwarfed molars with cusps covered with globular enamel growths, referred to as mulberry molars. These symptoms present in early childhood, after the age of two. In contrast, one of the earliest symptoms of congenital syphilis is snuffles, or persistent rhinitis, and this is seen before the age of two. Patients commonly display a collapse of the bridge of the nose, a finding described as saddle nose, represented by the saddle on the nose. Inflammation of the cornea in congenital syphilis can lead to blindness, portrayed by the blinds over the eyes, and sensorineural hearing loss, or deafness, pictured by the headphones covering the ears. Finally, hepatitis, shown by the liver in flames, is also a known manifestation of congenital syphilis. So let's recap syphilis, which is one of the congenital torch infections to be aware of. Infants who contract this infection often display nonspecific torch symptoms, which include hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia. Often, vertically transmitted syphilis results in stillbirth and is linked to abnormal fluid accumulation, a phenomenon termed hydrops fatalis. Bone deformities are common with congenital syphilis, with patients going on to develop saber shins, notched teeth, and a saddle nose. Other complications of this infection include blindness, deafness, and hepatitis. Congenital syphilis. Do not forget the blindness, the deafness, the death in utero, stillborn, hydrops fatalis, saber chins, Hutchinson teeth, which is notched. Do not forget the hepatitis as well. After each pycmonic, you have multiple choice questions like these. Here's question one, two, and three. If you know the answer to these questions, please comment below. Pycmonics let you rearrange the topics based on the book that you're using to study. You can watch the pycmonics by subjects or by systems. Each day, you have a quiz of multiple choice questions to see if you remember or not. This is the step-by-step -step approach that I use to master these pycmonics. I watch the animation, then I watch the story animation. There is education and there is story. These are two different modes on pycmonic. Then I watch the animation again. I pause and look at the picture. I close my eyes and try to imagine everything and put it in its place. I open my eyes and see how I did. Then I solve the quiz, the multiple choice questions, and I get a piece of paper and write down the places of the characters on the page. I will revisit the same pycmonic on day two, day five, and day 30. And believe me, there are pycmonics that I still remember from 10 years ago. You can try pycmonic for free. You can access pycmonic.com on your computer or download the pycmonic app. When you watch, when you listen, when you story tell, when you read the script, when you practice space repetition, and when you answer multiple choice questions and even create your own pycmonics, you tend to remember for longer. And just like we do towards the end of each video, we have a comparison table. So let's talk about the torch infections. Group B strep, you can consider it as part of the O, others. It's part of the normal flora in many women. It's in the vaginal area and the perianal area. Transmission from the mother to the baby can lead to neonatal sepsis or neonatal pneumonia or neonatal meningitis. You diagnose by PCR or culture, treatment is penicillin. Don't forget that penicillin V is oral, but this is penicillin G, which is injection because this is a severe condition. The prophylaxis is penicillin. The treatment is also penicillin. Next, toxoplasmosis, that's the T in the word torch. Risk factors, undercooked meat and exposure to cat feces. Here are the neonatal symptoms. Do not forget the hydrocephalus, chorioretinitis, and intracranial calcifications. Diagnosed by PCR, treatment is pyrimethamine sulfadiazine. Next, varicella zoster virus, part of the O letter, others. Acquired by respiratory droplets can lead to rash and pneumonia in the mother, can lead to skin disease in the baby. Diagnosed with PCR, treat acyclovir, prevention, varicella zoster immunoglobulin. Next, rubella, which is the R in the acronym. Acquired by respiratory droplets, symptoms include the blueberry muffin rash, the congenital cataract, congenital deafness, patent ductus arteriosus, and the hypoplastic pulmonary artery. And do not forget the glaucoma as well. Diagnosis, PCR, treatment. There is no treatment for rubella once I have it, but I can prevent it via the MMR vaccine. This is a live attenuated vaccine, so we should not give it during pregnancy. We should give it before pregnancy. Next, CMV. 
Neonatal symptoms include seizures, congenital deafness, intracranial periventricular calcifications. Don't forget the hypotonia and the chorioretinitis diagnosed with PCR. Treat with gancyclovir. If it ends in vir, it's antiviral. HSV or herpes simplex virus. Draw the line in the sand above the waist is usually HSV1. Below the waist is HSV2. We're talking about vertical transmission from the mother to the neonate. So we're talking about HSV2 in most cases, but not all cases. Neonatal symptoms include meningoencephalitis, gingivostomatitis, herpes ophthalmicus, and sepsis. So it's a beautiful song, meningoencephalitis, gingivostomatitis, and herpes ophthalmitis. Diagnosis, zinc smear, PCR, and you can culture the ulcer. Herpes love to make vesicles that can ulcerate. Treatment, acyclovir. Prevention, C-section. If the vaginal canal is likely contaminated with herpes, try not to deliver vaginally. Instead, perform a cesarean section. HIV. In the mother, symptoms of HIV, and that's a very big topic. Neonatal symptoms include fatigue, weight loss, lymphadenopathy, lethargy, fevers, oral thrush, and hepatosplenomegaly. It is very similar to infectious mononucleosis in its presentation. Diagnosis, the old school, ELISA, and Western blot. Nowadays, HIV-1 or HIV-2 antigen antibody immunoassay and the viral load should suffice. The antigen antibody immunoassay is for the mother, but the viral load is for the mother and the baby. Treatment, there is no treatment for congenital neonatal HIV, but you can try to decrease the risk by performing a C-section and by giving antiretroviral medications. Syphilis. Symptoms of congenital syphilis include anemia, hydrops vitalis, mulberry molars, saddle nose, snuffles, ragads, saber shin, Hutchinson teeth or notched teeth, and it can lead to neonatal death. Stillborn and hydrops vitalis. Diagnosis. The painless chancre can be diagnosed with dark field microscopy. Then we have serum tests like VDRL and RPR. These are more sensitive and less specific. If you want the more specific ones, you have MHATPA or FTA-ABS. The treatment of syphilis is similar to the treatment of group B strep. It's penicillin G, once again. And let's review one more. The torch infections include the T, toxoplasmosis, O, others, including Parvo B19, including hepatitis B and HIV. You can put HIV with the others or you can put HIV with the H. There's also varicella zoster and gonorrhea. Then we have the R, which is rubella. C, cytomegalovirus. H is herpes simplex virus and HIV. And S is syphilis. Look at this wonderful preparation of the RPR, VDRL, FTA, ABS, and MHA, TPA. Toxoplasmosis is a torch infection. Torch infections are characterized by hepatomegaly, jaundice, the yellow liver, and thrombocytopenia. In many cases, the mother is asymptomatic or might have lymphadenopathy. The fetus, intrauterine growth restriction, IUGR, hepatosplenomegaly, deafness, chorioretinitis, and hydrocephalus. And don't forget the calcifications in the brain. Next, we have rubella, which is German measles, hence the German flag. We have nonspecific torch symptoms, including hepatomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia. Congenital rubella syndrome is characterized by patent ductus arteriosus with the continuous machine-like murmur. Pulmonary artery hypoplasia, there is deafness, we have congenital cataract, we have glaucoma, and blueberry muffin rash. Next, we have cytomegalovirus. The nonspecific torch symptoms include hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia. The fetus, intrauterine growth restriction, deafness, microcephaly, seizures, periventricular calcifications, petechial rash and blueberry muffin rash. And don't forget the chorioretinitis. Diagnosis is via urine, viral culture, and PCR. Next, we have syphilis. Non-specific torch symptoms including hepatomegaly, jaundice, and thrombocytopenia. 
it can lead to stillbirth and high drops fetalis. Saber shins, notched teeth, saddle nose, blindness, deafness, and hepatitis. There are also secretions around the mouth and nose known as ragads, as well as snuffles, also known as syphilitic rhinitis, which is more severe than the common rhinitis. If you join Picmonic today by clicking on the link in the description box or in the first comment, you'll get access to more than 1,800 different Picmonics. Each Picmonic has an animated video in two formats, one is educational, one is story, and there are multiple choice questions after each Picmonic. They have Picmonics for all of these different bacteria and much more. Not to mention the fungi, the viruses, the parasites, the prion diseases, etc. And that's just microbiology. They also have picmonics for anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, psychology, internal medicine, and much, much more. My favorite picmonics are those of microbiology, pharmacology, genetic diseases, and OBGYN. Whether you're studying to be a doctor, a nurse, PA, NP, PT, OT, pharmacist, etc., Picmonic has a solution for you. You can watch these Picmonics online on their website, or you can download the app to your phone or tablet. The app has excellent reviews. So what are you waiting for? Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash metacosis and they will hook you up. You will learn from the pencil villain, penicillin, the sepsis snake, the octopus, oxytocin, and warfarin, the war fairy. I remember my own board exam. The questions that had related picmonics were the ones that I answered the fastest, which saved me a lot of time on the exam. Thank you guys for watching and thank you picmonic for sponsoring this video. Get a discount to picmonic.com by using my link in the description box. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and picmonic, where medicine is really fun.